Elizabeth Hardwick was born on the family estate of five acres, overlooking Nottinghamshire, on the northeast border of Derbyshire, in the parish of Ortucknell. Her exact date of birth is not known, but it is thought she was born in 1521. Elizabeth would become known as Bess. Her father was John Hardwick of Derbyshire, her mother was Elizabeth Leake. Her father would die relatively young, at only 40 years of age, and her mother would be left to raise a son, and heir, and four daughters. Bess's mother would remarry, the son of a neighbouring family, the Leaches. Bess herself would marry four times, each time gaining more wealth, and status, in noble society. Bess was actually quite well educated for the period, in Elizabethan time and for a woman as well. It was thought, quite often in this period, that educating women was a waste of time. In Bess's case, this was certainly not true, without her education it is unlikely she would have prospered as well as she did throughout her life. Bess Hardwick's duty was to marry well. Bess more than accomplished this goal, she not only married well once, but four times. Her first husband was Robert Barlow, the 13-year-old heir to the neighbouring estate. They married in 1534. Robert had a very sickly constitution, and being so young the marriage was never consummated, he died in 1545. Bess was left to one third of all revenues from the estate as his widow. Through Bess's second marriage, she would become Lady Cavendish, marrying Sir William Cavendish on August 20, 1547. Sir William himself was twice widowed, and had two daughters of his own. Together, Bess and Sir William would have eight children, of which two would die in infancy. Sir William was twice Bess's age, and in October 1557, Sir William would make Bess a widow for the second time. In 1559, Sir William St. Lowe would request Bess become his wife, and she accepted. Her new husband was captain of the guard, and chief butler of England to Elizabeth I. He died around 1564 or 5, under suspicious circumstances. It is thought he may have been poisoned by his brother. He would, in fact, have the last word, as he left everything he had, to Bess. In her current position as Lady of the Bedchamber to Queen Elizabeth, she enjoyed daily access to the Queen, and the Queen's favour. Holding such a high position put her in the orbit of numerous important noble men. Her fourth, and final marriage would be to George Talbot, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury. This pairing came about as parents. Two of Bess's children were married to two of George's offspring. They married in 1568, and Bess became the Countess of Shrewsbury. It was during this marriage that Bess would come into regular contact with Queen Mary Stuart. At Queen Elizabeth's order, the Earl of Shrewsbury would be given custody of Queen Mary. This would be the case for 15 years, and in that time, Bess spent many hours in Mary's company, and together they created many fine works of embroidery which remain within the family home, as part of the historical collection of Hardwick Hall, which Bess made sure, would survive down the centuries, by bequeathing such items to be preserved by her heirs, in perpetuity. It was also commonly believed the rift between husband and wife was created by their custodial duties. The sixth Earl of Shrewsbury would die in 1590, leaving Bess, the Dowager Countess of Shrewsbury. Setting aside Bess's accumulated wealth, through her many marriages, she would also become famous for a granddaughter, Arbella Stuart, daughter of Elizabeth Cavendish, Bess's daughter, and Charles Stuart, 1st Earl of Lennox, both having a claim to the English throne, but subsequently coming to a tragic end. It would be in 1590, that Bess would engage an architect to build her famous home, Hardwick Hall. Completed in 1597, Bess lived in this property for the remainder of her days. On February 13, 1608, Elizabeth Talbot, Dowager Countess of Shrewsbury, Bess of Hardwick, died in her home. Her body was laid to rest in Derby Cathedral, where a memorial to her is displayed.